This is the Music History Today podcast for October 4th. On today's show, Janis Joplin passes away, Dan Rather finds out what the frequency is, and two legends do something for the first time. First up, though, on this date in 1881, the automatic player piano was patented by Edward Laveau. In 1961, Bob Dylan played at Carnegie Hall for the first time. 50 people were in the audience, although you could swear it was 5,000 people by the number of people who said that they were there. In 1963, Eric Clapton replaced Anthony Topham in the group The Yardbirds. In 1973, the BBC aired the 500th episode of the TV show Top of the Pops. In 1980, Queen hit number one with their song Another One Bites the Dust. Also on that same day, Carly Simon collapsed on stage in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania from exhaustion. In 1982, the group Squeeze broke up. In 1986, the event that inspired R.E.M.'s song What's the Frequency Kenneth occurred when CBS television reporter Dan Rather was assaulted by a guy who kept saying, Kenneth, what is the frequency? Also in 1986, Gary Sharon replaced Sammy Hagar as a lead singer in Van Halen, proving to Kenneth what the frequency was. Just kidding. Anyway, moving on. In 1994, Sting's former accountant, Keith Moore, was charged with stealing $5 million from him. In 1996, the Tom Hanks-directed movie about a one-hit wonder band, That Thing You Do, premiered in theaters. In 1997, the Farm Aid 10 benefit concert was held in Illinois after being canceled in Texas due to low ticket sales. In 2009, the Farm Aid 22 benefit concert took place. In 2015, the group New Hope Club formed. Also on that same day, Van Halen performed at the Hollywood Bowl in Los Angeles, California. It was their final concert as a group. In 2016, Gwen Stefani divorced Gavin Rossdale of Bush. In 2019, the group Super M was formed. Also on that same day, the movie Joker opened in movie theaters. Musically, it created controversy, especially in England, because it used the song Rock and Roll Part 2 by rocker and multi-convicted pedophile Gary Glitter, which meant that Glitter profited by receiving a lot of royalties for the use of the song. In classical music, in 1959, Dmitry Shostakovich premiered his first cello concerto. In 2005, the Palace of the Arts Opera House opened in Valencia, Spain. In 2017, due to an injury to his left hand, pianist Lang Lang played Gershwin's Rhapsody in Blue in concert at Carnegie Hall with his right hand only. He did have help, though. 14-year-old pianist Maxim Lando played the left-hand part. In theater, in 1918, Mae West's musical Sometime premiered on Broadway. In 1952, the Broadway show Top Banana closed, and in 1965, the musical Pickwick opened. In award ceremonies that were held on October 4th in 1995, Alison Krauss and Alan Jackson were among the big winners at the Country Music Association Awards, and in 2000, the Chicks, Faith Hill, and Tim McGraw were among the big winners at the Country Music Association Awards. Albums that were released on October 4th in the UK include in 1974 when John Lennon released Walls and Bridges and in 1999 the Bloodhound Gang released Hooray for Boobies. Meanwhile, in America, in 1971, Frank Zappa released the soundtrack to 200 Motels. In 1974, Rod Stewart released Smiler. In 1975, Elton John released Rock of the Westies. In 1980, Trooper released Untitled. In 1982, Jefferson Starship released Winds of Change. Daryl Hall and John Oates released H2O. Culture Club released Kissing to be Clever. And The Associates released Sulk. In 1984, Barbara Streisand released Emotion. In 1988, Kenny G released Silhouette. Also on that same day, Ultramagnetic MCs released Critical Beatdown, Anita Baker released Giving You the Best That I Got, and Eddie Money released Nothing to Lose. In 1991, Sabotage released Streets, a rock opera. 
1993, Danny Minogue released Get Into You and Entombed released Wolverine Blues. In 1994, R.E.M. released R.E.M. Singles Collected. Dream Theater released Awake. Robbie Robertson and the Red Road Ensemble released music for the Native Americans. The DBs released Paris Avenue. Accept released Death Row. And Bon Jovi released Crossroad. In 1999, The Clash released From Here to Eternity live. David Bowie released Ours. And Manfred Mann's Earth Band released The Best of Manfred Mann's Earth Band Remastered. In 2004, The Church released Beside Yourself. In 2005, Nickelback released All the Right Reasons. Fiona Apple released Extraordinary Machine. The Talking Heads released their self-titled album. Bonnie Raitt released The Essentials. Little Feet released Barnstorm and Live Volume 2. The Cars released The Essentials. In 2010, Blondie released Blondie at the BBC. 2011, the Indigo Girls released Beauty Queen Sister. And in 2013, Helene Fisher released Fabenspiel. Singles that were released on October 4th in the UK include in 1963 when Jerry and the Pacemakers released You'll Never Walk Alone. In 1974, John Lennon released Whatever Gets You Through the Night. And in 1988, the Beach Boys released Kokomo. Meanwhile in America, in 1966, the new vaudeville band released Winchester Cathedral. In 1969, It's a Beautiful Day released White Bird. In 1975, Paul McCartney and Wings released Letting Go. In 1984, Daryl Hall and John Oates released Out of Touch, which became a big hit for them. In 1994, Green Day released their hit Welcome to Paradise. In 1999, Faith Hill released the single Breathe, which would go on to become Single of the Year. In 2010, Bruno Mars released Grenade. In 2013, Connor Maynard released Are You Crazy? And in 2018, Halsey released Without Me. Before we go any further, we'd like to tell you that there is now a Music History In-Depth podcast where we go more in-depth on a few of the events that happen in music history for that particular week. The Music History In-Depth podcast runs every Tuesday on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts from, as does our Music Halls of Fame podcast, which talks about a member of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame along with other Music Halls of Fame, museums, and walks of fame. The Music Halls of Fame podcast drops every Thursday and can also be found on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. Now, back to this podcast. Artists who were born on October 4th include producer and DJ BT, Leanne Pennick of the group Little Mix, singer Lene, rapper Rich Homie Kwan, rapper Lil Mama, rapper Amara La Negra, Singer Stacy Solomon, singer Yoon Jung Han of Seventeen, former Def Jam Records head Russell Simmons, rapper Jordan Young, singer Nicholas Yosef, rapper Lit Killa, singer John Cicada, Chris Lowe of the Pet Shop Boys, Lena Katina of Tattoo, Leo Barnes of Hot House Flowers, Barbara McDonald of Timbuk Three, Jody Stevens of Big Star. Jim Fiedler of Buffalo Springfield, Marlena Davis of the Orlans, country music singer Leroy Van Dyke, Perkle Lee Moses Jr. of the El Dorados, Nina Carter of Blonde on Blonde, and country music singer the legendary Miss Dottie West. Artists who unfortunately passed away on October 4th include composer Valentin Molitar, who passed away in 1713 at the age of 76. Composer Eleanor Westenholz passed away in 1838 at the age of 79. Composer Louis Massonneau passed away in 1848 at the age of 82. Composer Alfredo Kiel passed away in 1907 at the age of 57. Composer George Eduardes passed away in 1915 at the age of 59. Opera singer Marie Guthiel Schroeder passed away in 1935 at the age of 61. Composer Edmund Eisler passed away from injuries that he received from falling off of stage, actually, in 1949 at the age of 75. 
The man who built Radio City Music Hall in New York City, John Lowry, passed away in 1962 at the age of 79. Singer Natalino Otto passed away in 1969 at the age of 57. Composer George McKay passed away in 1970 at the age of 71. Singer, songwriter extraordinaire, Rock and Roll Hall of Famer, Miss Janis Joplin, passed away from drug issues in 1970 at the age of 27, joining the infamous 27 Club. We discuss more about her life, among many other things, including how Steve Jobs managed to save the music industry from itself on this week's Music History In-Depth podcast, which has dropped on this channel, regardless of whether you are watching or listening. Moving on. Jazz singer Del Porter passed away in 1977 at the age of 75. Singer Christina Sparenberg passed away in 1979 at the age of 56. Pianist Glenn Gould passed away from a stroke in 1982 at the age of 50. Singer Lori Anders passed away from cancer in 1992 at the age of 70. Pianist Bill Chalice passed away in 1994 at the age of 90. Guitarist Danny Gatton passed away from mental health issues in 1994 at the age of 48. Eric Brooke Dreskift of the group Gorgoroth passed away in 1999 at the age of 30. Art Farmer of Farmer's Market and also the Jazz Tet passed away from heart issues in 1999 at the age of 71. Mike Gibbons of the group Badfinger passed away from a brain aneurysm in 2005 at the age of 56. Singer Mercedes Sosa passed away in 2009 at the age of 74. Paul Revere of the group Paul Revere and the Raiders passed away from cancer in 2014 at the age of 76. Composer Conrad Boehner passed away in 2014 at the age of 73. Composer Donald H. White passed away in 2016 at the age of 95. Saxophonist Hamiet Bluet passed away in 2018 at the age of 78. Musicologist John Tyrell passed away in 2018 at the age of 76. And the legendary coal miner's daughter, country music icon Loretta Lynn, who we also talk about on this week's Music History In-Depth podcast, passed away in 2022 at the age of 90. Next on the Music History Today podcast, it is October 5th, when in 2011, the world lost the man who helped to create iTunes, the iPod, and the iPhone, Apple CEO Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs. 